Please welcome Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson of Rush. Well, hello. And we thought we waited a long time to get in the Hall of Fame. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is our great, great honor to be with you and yes this evening. Alex? Thanks, Ged. Wow, what an honor to be here tonight doing this. It's really, really great. We all start somewhere. And for me, my journey with Yes began when I was a teenager, gently fishing out the Yes album out of the sleeve, being just a bit freaked by the disembodied head on the cover, placing the needle in the groove, sitting back, and letting the music wash over me. I may have smoked a cigarette or something, but pretty sure I did. But Yes were my gateway band in so many ways. There's nothing so fleeting yet enduring about the way music feels when you're 17 years old. As Yes played in my room, I played too. I spent hours picking my way through songs like Starship Trooper and Yours Is No Disgrace. Yeah, how, how wonderful was that swirling outro in Starship Trooper? I must have played that a million times. But I love their music. Even more, once I'd learned to master them, and not that I really did, I never did them justice, but I love them still. Yes, helped give me the gift of music, which is everything, as you know, and made me want to be a better musician, and that provided some of the determination to one day stand on this stage giving tribute to this amazing band. I'll leave you with this. The musical choices we make in our youth help to mold who we become. Choose the guitar intro for going for the one. Yeah. Choose learning to play Starship Trooper on a cheap secondhand guitar. Not so easy. Choose Chris Squire's amazing bass tone. Right, Ed? Choose John Anderson's ethereal vocals. Choose Fragile. Choose wearing a cape before Rick Wakeman did. This guy right here. <laughs> Choose staying out all night to see your favorite band. Choose Roundabout. Choose the glorious guitar work in Owner of a Lonely Heart. So beautiful. Choose the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and definitely choose yes. Blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like he can play Starship Trooper? I don't think so. So I'd like to ask if the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame would indulge me for a few moments to share some personal experiences of yes, the band. So picture this, in the early 70s, I spent up from one to three years in grade 10 in high school, seated at the back of the class with my new pal, Oscar. He was sat just across from me and the teacher's words were bouncing aimlessly off us as Oscar riffed on some of our favorite Monty Python skits. He had me at the dead parrot gag for sure. How could we not become friends? But it wasn't just the Ministry of Silly Walks that we bonded over. I can still recall one of the days that we opted out of school and were sitting cross-legged on the floor of Oscar's room as he introduced me to an album called Time and a Word by a band called Yes that I'd never heard of. Right? I still thrill to the bass part in no opportunity necessary, no experience needed. The way I did the first time I heard it that day. For years, people asked me why I played a Rickenbacker bass. And I ha all I have to do is point to that album, that song, and Chris Squire's incredibly original playing to provide the answer.
Later still, Oscar played me, yours is no disgrace. Then I've seen all good people. And we both sat there open-mouthed as the songs rose up around us and our musical world shifted and fell from its axis. I might have been a young musician jamming in basement rooms of Toronto, but through Yes, I was tuning into a wider world of possibilities, one where music seemed to have no limitations. It was a crisp night in 1972 when Oscar, myself, and this guy, Alex Lifeson, lined up overnight around the block that was then Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens to finally witness Yes live for ourselves. The sky was a high dome of stars, and as I recall, Alex kept, going, kept us going by nipping to the store and bringing back honeydew drinks. Really. <laughs> I can close my eyes now, and I'm back there, intellectually, visually, viscerally, sitting in row 10. It was like nothing I'd ever seen or experienced before. It was actually profound. And it's not overstating things to say that it changed the way I played and listened to music forever. And so here we are, decades later, and the music of Yes is still echoing down through the years, showing me that music truly is a continuum. So on behalf of Oscar, my good friend and Alex's Neil, who's not here tonight, Alex and myself, I say thank you, Yes. It's our great, great privilege and our great honor to right a terrible wrong and to finally welcome Yes into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs>